hello and welcome back to my channel when I do this video I think I'm going to do it in take so I will be doing some editing what is this video for well you see it in the title weekly wrap-ups however because this is my first weekly wrap-up in maybe two years or even longer than that I'm going to cover all of the books that I read so far this month Today is the 16th and I have read 17 books. That's pretty good by a lot of standards because it's a book a day. But I thought I'd be reading two books a day, but I just, you know, I can only do what I can do. Plus, I'm giving more attention to this channel, to content. I got a new d device here that makes overhead recording super easy. So I'm learning how to do the time lapse. I, I just have a lot going on. Um, I have a spiritual routine in the morning, and I've got my health issues. So with all of that, the question is, how did I get the 17 books read, and what is my projection for the rest of the month? Now, I may, I may, I have to think about it. I may be making this same type of video in two weeks at the end of the month, or I will just go ahead and do a weekly reads next Monday. But we're, we're going to play that by ear. So when I do this wrap up, if you see me looking down, it's, it's because I have to look at my iPad. I have to because I haven't thought about a wrap up. I haven't prepared and I'm not a note taker. So uh, most of what you hear from me on this channel is completely wrong. It's been that way from the beginning, but today I must admit fatigue. I had a fever of 101 last night, so we're just going to just wing it. Okay. So let's get started for, and I'm going to get my phone so it can do stats for me. So I don't have to do the stats. I'm going to use uh, bookly and I'm going to the assistant and I'm clicking custom. I'm clicking the first, and then I'm clicking today. Well, I have I don't think I've read today because I've been so busy, but I'm clicking the first 16 days of the month, and I'm generating a report. And I, you know what? Why don't I just throw it up on the screen? I'm just gonna save. Oh, I just lost it. Let me just fix that. I I just put it on the screen, but let me share with you some of these stats. For the first 15 days, because remember, I didn't read today or have not read today yet, I have read 6,021 pages over the course of 17 books. My average reading speed is 59.4 pages an hour. The most pages I read in a day is 802. And the most minutes I read in a day is 891. Now, let's talk about those two numbers right there, 802 as far as most pages read in a day and 891 as far as minutes. So if you figure 24 hours times 60 minutes is 1,440. And the most minutes I read in a day is 891. That means I'm reading pretty much half the day. And there are days that I do that. There are days that I start, I, I my spiritual routine is first, and that takes about an hour, sometimes up to two hours. And then, so if I get up, say, at six, and I start reading at eight, I generally will try to read an entire book and start a second book, get halfway or two-thirds through that second book, and then the following day, pick up on that book and then read another book. And then there's days where, say, if I'm reading a series and I'm binging, that's when you see that number get to 890 because that's most minutes. It doesn't mean I read 891 minutes each day. That's just the most minutes I read during a single day in this two-week span. Now, the fastest page per hour, it says, was Remember Her Name by Lisa Reagan. I read that at a rate of 81 pages an hour. And the slowest one, it says I only read 32 page, pages an hour, and that's my sister's boyfriend from Nicola Marsh. So of this 
time span, I've read 14 out of 16 days. That means, as I mentioned, I haven't read today yet. And I probably won't. I'm just very tired. But I haven't read today yet. And there was a day somewhere in this first part of the month that I didn't read. But that's neither here nor there. Let's now talk about the books that I read and what I rated them, okay? We're going to start with My Sister's Boyfriend by Nicola Marsh. Now, basically, I'm a little flustered because My Sister's Boyfriend was a sequel to My Sister's Husband. So when I have some time, like, you know, I've got nothing to do in my life, right? But when I have some time, I want to read My Sister's Husband and go back and reread My Sister's Boyfriend. Even though I went in blind, I still gave My Sister's Boyfriend five stars, okay? And basically, it's two sisters, Lizzie and Brooke. And Lizzie is a psychologist that works and helps prisoners with recidivism, with doing better after they get out of prison, giving them counseling, helping to guide them or whatever. That's what Lizzie does. Brooke is her sister and Brooke is excited to share the excitement she has that she has a new boyfriend and she can't wait for her new boyfriend to meet Lizzie. Well, Brooke's boyfriend's name is Noel. And at some point when Noel and Lizzie lock eyes, Lizzie is furious because there are things that she knows about Noel. Yes, you have, and it doesn't necessarily involve her treatment of Noel, but with Dr. Patient Confidentiality, she can't tell Brooke what she knows about Noel. All she can say is, you have to get rid of him. You have to end this. Now, it's a psychological thriller, right? And what's exciting about this book is the buildup, it's kind of like a pressure cooker, which I have a new pressure cooker and I'm using it three or four times a week. The buildup is there. The pressure is there right from the beginning. Brooke's boyfriend, Noel, and Lizzie, what is the problem? And then... As that steam starts to release out of that pressure cooker or things start to be revealed regarding Noel and why Lizzie doesn't want him with Brooke. So, five stars. Okay? Then I read Kate Carlisle's Fixer Upper series. There are 11 books, right? What I did was, and I am going to Goodreads so I can um, look at the book covers while I talk to you. I'm not going to go into all of these books simply because it would make this video more than an hour. So if I look up uh, A Knife Before Christmas, for example, that's the latest book. And actually that book comes out October 22nd. So I will do a video for that book and I'll put it on this channel. So if it's The Knife Before Christmas by Kate Carlisle, that makes it 11 books. Now, basically, our char uh, main character, our protagonist, Shannon Hammer, is a contractor. She's a very good and very busy contractor, and she gets job after job. She has a lot of respect, and her past, her history is... Her mother died while they were young. Her and her sister were young. And their father was a very busy contractor. And he didn't want latchkey kids. So he took the girls with him to the jobs. And the girls learned every single thing they could ever know from their dad. Shannon became a contractor. And I believe it's Chloe. I, I could be wrong. But her sister has a... a one of those shows like on TLC where you do uh, renovations. So she has a rental show. And so that's who the girls are. But your main character is Shannon Hammer. Okay. Now, 
The Fixer Upper series is a cozy mystery series. And we all know what cozies are. Or most of us know what cozies are. And what this book does is it gives us that formula that exists in probably 99.9% .9 of a cozy mystery series. So it's a simple formula and it works. And before I tell you what that formula is, I basically get my books from NetGalley, the review site, because I'm a book reviewer, right? I get my books from NetGalley. And if a book is a part of a series, I use my online library via my library card that's to my local library. And I use Libby and I use Hoopla. My library in the town I live in connects to Boston Public Library and all the surrounding towns. So I believe I have nine or 10 libraries within my library code, okay? So remember I, I just mentioned A Knife Before Christmas is a cozy from Kate Carlisle and I was telling you about Shannon Hammer. Well, A Knife Before Christmas is a review title and it's the 11th book in the series. I can't do 11 fingers, obviously. It's the 11th book in the series. So I go to my library, which is via Libby or Hoopla, and get the previous books and read them before I read the title that I'm going to review. So with that said, here's the simple formula. The crime is not exceedingly cruel. It has to be an off-screen murder, okay? then the cozy mystery has a low rating. We know there's not gonna be any sex, any language, and any gratuitous violence. And then cozies are pretty short, 224, say to 256 pages, pretty short. They're definitely lighthearted. There's a, uh, something I'm thinking of, but basically when, you have your protagonist solving a murder, you've got to have some levity in there. And the levity is that lightheartedness. They're usually always in a small town. And then our protagonist has to have a career or a hobby that can thread through every book in a series. That's your formula. Now, if I go to Fantastic Fiction, I'm going there now, and I look up Kate Carlisle, I don't know why my tablet is holding off. I just want to tell you how many books in her Bibliophile series I read because I wasn't doing these videos, so therefore I haven't told you about the Bibliophile series. I read that last week. There's 17 books in that series, including the 12 Books of Christmas, which is the latest book. And so in that bibliophile series, our character is a book binder, a book restorer, a book expert. In the Fixer Upper series that now I'm going to start scrolling all 12, uh, 11 of those books. I'll be scrolling them right now. In the Fixer Upper series, we have a contractor. Now, what I did is, at some point, I read book six. So, what I ended up doing is skipping that this month. So, book six is a wrench in the works. So, I'm gonna sh I'm going to show you that cover, but I have not read that book in this round. I read it uh, maybe a year or two ago. So, they were a high end finish. This old homicide. Crowned in Moldering, Deck the Hallways, Eves of Destruction, A Wrench in the Works, as I just mentioned, Shot Through the Hearth, Premeditated Mortar, Absence of Mallets, Dressed to Drill, and The Night Before Christmas. Did you catch those names? Did you catch those puns? Crowned in Moldering versus crown and molding or, or deck the hallways instead of deck the halls or eaves of destruction, E-A-V-E-S or the knife before Christmas, just cool, cool names. 
So I read all 11 of those books, loved them. That probably took me the first four or five days of this month, September. And I, I can't say enough good things about Kate Carlisle. And I will be following both of those series, the Bibliophile series and the Fixer Upper series. But the Fixer Upper series, A Knife Before Christmas, doesn't come out until October 22nd. So it will likely be this time next year before I get book 12 in that series, before anybody gets book 12. So that's all I'm going to say about the Fixer Upper series. It's a great series and I highly recommend it because if you like cozy mysteries, then you will no doubt enjoy that series. So I'm pulling up the next book on my Kindle. Excuse me, none of my Kindle, I'm on my iPad. And that is A Seaside Murder by Alice Castle. Now this book and a few other books that I'm gonna tell you about are continued books and series that I have been reading from the beginning. So this Alice Castle book was indeed a cozy mystery, follows that same formula that I had, you know, I pretty much read to you straight off of the internet. And then now you have this book here, but the thing about A Seaside Murder is this is only the second book in the series. So it's the Sarah Vane Mysteries. Now, the first book was Murder at an English Pub, which I read about six months ago. And then this week I read A Seaside Murder. And basically you have a woman of a certain age. Don't you love that? A lady of a certain age. Am I a lady of a certain age? Well, that's what Sarah Vane is, okay? She's a nurse, she's retired, and now she moved to Merstairs and she's just doing enjoyable things with her life. She has a best friend and they are partners in crime. But she is an amateur sleuth. She happens upon a body on the seaside. She's out, I believe she's walking her dog. And so with this seaside murder book by Alice Castle, if you read the first book in the series, and I say why not, because you can get them both on Kindle Unlimited. And The Seaside Murder is out. It came out September 5th. And in this book, we have a victim who was a, a teacher. And she had the reputation of being well-loved, but yet she was murdered. Now, the, it, the cool thing about this book is it was question, 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 question. Why so many questions? Well, Sarah happened upon a woman that was in the throes of death. And when she goes and she rushes to that woman, the woman says, wait, wait. That's all she says. So now, Sarah, uh, Sarah's like, I'm going to find the murderer. And what's more is the police believe that the victim killed herself. So they're not taking it seriously. So a receipt kind of sticks to the bottom of Sarah's shoe. So she becomes, I'm, you know what? I'm going to keep this receipt and I'm going to solve this murder. So she goes, she leaves Murray stairs and she goes to Whitside. She goes to the Wits Hotel. She goes to Alice's, I mean, Abby's ex-boyfriend, Joel Witzel. You get that? So the town is Whitstable. There's Wits Hotel. There's Josh Witzel. What was the wit that was whispered to Sarah before the victim died? Really good book. I loved it. I gave it four stars and I'm not going to lie. I love cozy mysteries and I love that I got in early on that particular book. Now the next book I read is not a cozy. Actually the next two books are not cozies. So let's bring this book up. I'm just bringing each book up on uh, Goodreads because it's just easier for me to do it that way. And then I'll just like smooth out the video if I have to. Now, remember her name is out. No. Oh, actually it comes out tomorrow. And I've already made the video. So I guess I'll 
edit that video and get it out to you tomorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So remember her name. Now, we have our detective, Josie Quinn. And this is the 21st book in the Detective Josie Quinn series. I think I picked up on this series on book three. And again, time is not my friend. But I do want to go back and read books one and two. Okay, so now Josie finds a baby. But no, but there's no one else around. So Josie and her team... They're looking for the baby's mother, okay? And there's something that was found with the baby, like maybe like in the car seat or in the blanket, that gives Josie chills, but it also gives Josie her first clue. So finding the baby wasn't the first clue. It was what she found with the baby that was her first clue. And because she was able to have that as a clue, it gave her a direction in which to go in. However, the killer is playing a game. Every clue leads to the next clue. Every clue that leads to the next clue leads to the next murder. Then there's another clue, then there's another murder. Remember, this is not a cozy, this is a crime thriller, a mystery thriller, and Josie is frustrated because this killer is playing around. But he's not really playing around because he's leaving bodies in his wake. So, can our protagonist, Josie Quinn, find the person that is responsible for these murders? So, that's a good book. It looks like I haven't reviewed it here on Goodreads, but I will be getting that review up I guess tomorrow, goodness, there's no time. Time, time, time. Where does time go? I don't know. So the next book that I read was, again, it's not a cozy, as I mentioned. It's another crime thriller, another mystery thriller. And it this is Her Last Walk Home by Patricia Gibney. And it's her 14th book in the D.I. Lottie Parker series. D.I. is Detective Inspector. So Lottie is the detective inspector. She has a team. She has a significant other. The question is, what is the case? Well, a woman was out, gets picked up by a taxi, and then a body is found. But it's more than that. And I wanted to say that I read this book last month but it came up on Neck Alley as an audio. And I love this series and I love audiobooks. So guess what? 13, 14 hour audiobook, even though I already read the book because the book itself is 500 pages. So I reread the book. I had to, I, I, just, I just had to. That's how good this series is. And having the opportunity to read or to listen to the audiobook was well worth it. Now, on the one hand, Lottie's trying to solve her murder, or the murder, okay? And then on the other hand, Lottie's partner, there's something going on that's creating conflict. And then you have Lottie's personal life. And what's happening in her personal life? Well, she's dating a man named Boyd. They almost got married, but you have to read the series to find out why that wedding didn't take place. And on a personal level, Boyd, okay, Mark, Mark Boyd, but everybody just pretty much calls him Boyd. Boyd has a son named Sergio, about eight years old, whose mother died. And uh, Mark or Boyd goes and gets his son Sergio, brings him back to where they live. And now he's trying to give Sergio whatever he needs to recoup from losing his mother and to adjust to his new circumstances. Meanwhile, remember, Boyd and Lottie almost got married. So if they were married, no doubt they'd be living together. So Boyd wants 
to blend their families. What are their families? Well, Lottie has three children. Two are adults. One is 17. Her son, Sean, is still a kid. He's 17. One of her daughters has a baby. And her mother is in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. So if Lottie wants to move in with Boyd, she has to fi figure out how to care for her daughter, Chloe, and her grandson. She has to figure out how to take care of her mother with a mother having Alzheimer's. She has to navigate a, a relationship with a little boy she barely knows. So that's all background music. It's playing in the background. But the thing is, there's a murder. And that's what Lottie has to try to focus on. I, as I've already said, I love this book. And like I said, it easily, easily garners five stars from me. That's the way that I like how much Patricia Gibney writes. And as I mentioned, it's the 14th book in that series. And I, I'm not quite sure. You have to check my video review. Um, no, actually, I'll tell you. I may edit this out, but I'm just going to click shop this series to see. Uh... Yes, these are on Kindle Unlimited. So you can read this series if you have a KU subscription. It's either $9.99 a month or $11.99 a month. Okay, let's move on. I want to wrap this video up. Back to another cozy mystery. This is the Lady Eleanor Swift book, and it's the 19th book in the series. It takes place in 1924. Lady Eleanor Swift is always about, always on the, on the move. She's here, she's there. And when I say on the move, I'm just going to spit some names out of other books in the series. Uh, Murder in the Snow, Bur Murder by the Sea, Murder at the Fair, uh... A Royal Murder, The French for Murder, Death Down the Isle, Murder in an Irish Castle. How about this one, Death on Deck? So Lottie is always going here. At the, excuse me, I'm thinking of Lottie Parker. Oh my goodness gracious. Lady Eleanor Swift is, is always busy and her butler Clifford accompanies her because he attends to her. He's, he's her number one. He was her uncle's butler for years so when her uncle passed away he became Lottie's butler what's more is Lottie has three other staff she has a uh, cook and two maids but in this particular book uh, Lady Eleanor Swift as well as her butler Clifford are on a are about to board a ship to travel down the Nile River and to go to Egypt but when they about they're about to board the ship, it's not what it was as advertised. It wasn't as advertised. Anyway, they go and they meet their first passenger, crude and rude. And then they meet the next passengers, a married couple who are bubbly at first and then they clam up right away. And then they know there's someone else, but they haven't quite met that person yet. So the trip is on, they get to one part of their destination, they disembark, they visit a while, they get back on the ship, and now we get into day two, and guess what? A body is found. The ship at this point is back on the water, back on the River Nile. So uh, excuse me, Lady Eleanor Swift wants to do whatever she can to solve that murder before that ship docks before those passengers disembark. And that's pretty much what Murder on the Nile is about. It, it, I could say more, but it's a good book. Um, I don't, I have not rated it yet, but generally I re rate those books a four. It's an easy four stars. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go on to Cougar Point by Greg Olson. So Cougar Point follows the Megan Carpenter, is part of the Megan Carpenter series. It's the fifth book, and the proper name of the series is Detective Megan Carpenter Number 5. 
And again, the book is Cougar Point. It's 424 pages. It, it will be out next week. In that particular book, in this particular book of the series, we have our character, Megan Carpenter. She, she helps her sister out. Why? Because excuse me, she helps her partner out. Her partner, Ronnie's mother, has gone missing. So Megan and Ronnie go to Cougar Point to try to find out what happened to Ronnie's mother and to get her back safely. That's pretty much the quickest way I can sum up Cougar Point for you. But while Megan is helping Ronnie work, look for her mother, they do try to get police permission or like the they like using their badges to open doors to get them access to things that they wouldn't have as civilians. Well, there's a cop that lives in Cougar Point. His name is Lucas. And his story goes back, I believe, to February 2023. And then it comes to the present. And then it goes back. And it comes to the present. So the question for the reader is, I thought we were looking for Ronnie's mother, but now we're dealing with this other detective named Lucas. And the... so you see what I'm saying? So guess what? They have to be threaded together. They have to connect one way or another. Really good book. Solid, solid book. I gladly give it four stars. Then we have Counting Miracles by Nicholas Sparks. Now I made this video I don't know if I posted it yet. I'm a little bit, I've got so much going on. But in Counting Miracles, you have three protagonists here. You have Tanner Hughes, who is ex-military. And he's kind of like, a, he works with vets. That's what I want to say. He's ex-military, he works with vets. But his grandmother was on her deathbed and she said something to him that led him to a town, Asheville, North Carolina, to be exact, so that he could try to find out who his father was. But you don't not only have Tanner Hughes, you have Caitlin. Caitlin is the mother of a teenager and a young boy. And something happens that connects Caitlin to Tanner. Then you have a third character. He's an 83-year-old man named Jasper. So you have that storyline that ties those three together one way or another. And it seems far removed because Caitlin is a doctor and Jasper is one of her patients. But Caitlin and Tanner Hughes, who I mentioned a couple minutes ago, have some type of connection. Tanner Hughes is in town for the purpose of finding his father. Now, I don't know if I've ever read a Nicholas Sparks books book that had scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. There was a lot of scriptures in this book. So I would kind of call it Christian fiction if I were naming the genre. Because I don't like the way the genre was named as romance fiction, women's fiction, contemporary, chick lit even, I'm in the three and a half to four star rating. And that's too bad because I absolutely love Nicholas Sparks. But there you have it. I, I can't say any more. I'm just counting miracles by Nicholas Sparks three and a half to four stars. And then to bring this video to a conclusion, I want to talk about Fatal Intrusion by Jeffrey Deaver and Isabella Maldonado. So they co-wrote this book and basically you have murders that take place in Southern California and our special agent, Carmen Sanchez of Homeland Security is on the game when her sister is attacked. There was something very specific about that attack that tells Carmen that this was no random attack and they need to 
everybody needs to pull in all their forces and find the person who attacked her sister. Meanwhile, there's a clue and this clue involves an, uh, an encryption. So she goes to the one person she knows that can break this computer code. And this computer code is broken. They just might be able to catch whoever's committing these murders and wh whoever it was that nearly cost her sister her life. So the, det the main female character is Carmen Sanchez and our male protagonist is Jake Heron. And this book here, Fatal Intrusion, is Sanchez and Heron number one. So yay, a new series for me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I just finished that book last night, I believe. And it's definitely going to get five stars when I write the review. My cat, he is here. Of course he's here. I'll clear the table for him so he can join me. Um, so... That's basically it. That I know this video is long. The future videos won't nearly be as long because I'll try to only do a week at a time. But I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that maybe you might be interested in one or two of the books. I'll leave the Amazon affiliate link in the description below. So in case you want to get it, check out some of those cozies because they usually are on Kindle Unlimited. And if, or if you have Audible or your library, you can look for the books there. So thank, I'm trying to keep him from being immodest. You know how cats like to show their butts. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you with my next video.